In this video we will discuss switch realization. So first we will discuss the realization of switches in our power converters using semiconductor devices such as power transmitters and diodes. And there's really just two major topics that we need to discuss. The first is when we have an ideal switch, how do we decide whether to replace it with a transistor or a diode or something else in order to make it work in the power converter application? And I'm going to introduce in this lecture and the next several lectures the idea of single quadrant, two quadrant, and four quadrant switches and how to decide which one of these to use depending on the application. The second topic is we need to talk about the real semiconductor devices and so I'm going to discuss power diodes, power MOSFETs, and the power IGBT or insulated gate bipolar transistor which are some of the most popular and major devices in use today. I don't want to get too heavily into semiconductor devices but we're going to talk about them so you can appreciate what are the major limitations and uh, important features that we need to think about from the standpoint of their use in their power electronics. Semiconductor devices are single pole, single throw type devices. So they have two power terminals and a transistor or a diode really acts as an on-off single pole, single throw switch like this. Now, so far in the course, I've been drawing single pole, double throw switches such as this one, in which the switch is either in position 1 or in position 2. So, the first thing that we have to do is replace a single pole, double throw switch with, the, with two single pole, single throw switches like this. And we, we can realize each of the single pole, single throw switches with a semiconductor power device. Now, this may seem like a trivial step, but in fact, it's not. With a single pole double throw switch, there are only two possible positions. Whereas with a two single pole single throw switches, we have two more cases. The switch can be in position 1 or in position 2. If switch A is on only or switch B is on only, but we also have a case in which we can turn both switches on or we can turn both switches off. And it is something that we need to consider. For this particular example of the buck converter, if we enable both switches at once, we basically destroy the converter because we short out the power source so we have a very large current flowing around this loop that can destroy the devices or at least cause a lot of power loss. So we have to go to some lengths in our drive circuit to make sure that that never happens even for a few nanoseconds. The other case where both switches are off at the same time can happen and it completely changes the characteristic of the converter when it does. Okay, we also need to talk about switches with respect how many quadrants of operations they have to work with. And this is really imposed on the circuits by the rest of the converter. So here I plotted what we're talking about, the, the horizontal axis is the off state voltage imposed on the switch by the converter when the switch is turned off so we also call this the blocking voltage or how much voltage does the switch have to block when it is off so the switch off state voltage generally is determined or given by the input voltage vg or perhaps the capacitor voltage in the converter and we also have to see whether or maybe the output voltage but we have to see how large that voltage is and whether it changes polarity. So perhaps it is positive at some values of jitter cycle and negative at others. And that affects how we realize the switch. Likewise, the switch on state current is the current imposed on the switch by the external converter or by the converter itself when the switch is turned on. Generally, the on-state current is an inductor current or some combination of inductor currents. And this can be a function of duty cycle also and perhaps it's a function of the load current. So again, we have to see what is the on-state current and how does it vary with the duty cycle. Is it 
like always positive or can it be positive sometimes and negative sometimes so what's sketched here is when both the off state voltage and the on state current are lying on the positive and so that this is in the first quadrant of this plane and we call this a single quadrant switch for this particular example okay there are many possibilities in these in different applications we may require one or more of these so in the single quadrant switch that i just mentioned is one example and in fact which quadrant does it have to operate in you can see there are four possible quadrants and so there are four ways in that sense to realize a single quadrant switch the next case here is called a current bidirectional two quadrant switch where the switch must conduct both positive and negative currents so perhaps one jody cycle the current is positive and at another it's negative but it only has to block positive voltage when it's off and so we call this a current bidirectional two quadrant switch there are two possibilities here depending on whether the blocking voltage is positive or negative the third example is a voltage bidirectional two quadrant switch in which the switch has to block both polarities of the voltage when it is off but only conduct one polarity of current and finally the four quadrant switch is the most general case where the switch may have to do anything it can block either positive or negative voltage when it is turned off and it can conduct either positive or negative current when it is turned on so this is the most complex case to both control and to realize with semiconductor devices but there are examples most notably the ac to ac type converters that that need four quadrant switches okay so let's talk here about the single quadrant case so here i've defined a switch an ideal switch i've defined a voltage across the switch with some polarity and i've defined the current is flowing from the plus terminal to the negative terminal of the reference voltage of the switch and so if the on state current and the off state voltage are of the single polarity then we have a single quadrant switch further we have what are called active switches and in these switches a switch state whether it's on or off is controlled only by a control terminal like the gate of a MOSFET or IGBT and so if you we know at any given time the conducting state of the switch by the control signal that we have applied to it on the other hand a passive switch doesn't have a control terminal for example a diode and instead its switch state is controlled by the converter waveforms that are applied to the switch so if the converter voltage or current forward biases the diode then it will the switch will be on for example the silicon controlled rectifier or SCR is a special case it is turned on with a control signal so the turn on transition is active but once it's on it behaves like a diode in which it won't turn off until the external circuit or the power converter circuit reverse biases the SCR okay so here's the diode and what I've drawn here is different than the on state and off state voltage this is the voltage versus current characteristic of the diode you know you can think of this as the classic exponential characteristic of the diode that looks like this and I've idealized it here to ignore the forward voltage drop and put the IV characteristic right along the axis okay so when the diode is on basically it conducts positive current and when the diode is off it blocks negative current negative voltage I'm sorry so in the planes that we have been drawing in the previous slides the off state voltage is negative and the on state current is positive and so that diode operates in this quadrant the second quadrant 
So if we work these quantities by solving the converter to find its voltages and currents and see what it applies to the, the switch and it turns out that we get quadrant 2, then we can realize it with a diode like this. Incidentally, suppose I had this define the voltage in the other direction, I'm free to do that. We could just as well define the voltage upside down and this is an arbitrary choice of the outset. So if we define voltage that way, then we have to define the current consistently as flowing from the reference positive to the negative terminals. And if we did that, we would find that the dial would operate in the fourth quadrant instead of the second. So if we do our analysis of the converter and see the applied voltages and currents on our switch, and it turns out to be in this fourth quadrant, then we know we need to connect the diode in the opposite direction to realize the switch. Okay, power transistors such as the bipolar junction transistor or the newer insulated gate bipolar transistor are devices that have, <coughs> if we plot the instantaneous voltage and current, they have characteristics like this. Depending on the gate voltage, of the IGBT or the the base current of the VJT and so these devices when they're on they operate with the voltage in this part of the the curve that is close to zero voltage and they conduct positive current when they're turned off by their control terminals and the characteristic is here and they can block positive voltage on the other hand, practical transistors such as <coughs> such as these generally are not capable of blocking significant negative voltage. And if you plot the reverse characteristics, it does something like this. And the device will break down if you apply more than a few voltage. A few volts of reverse voltage. So this is a practical detail in how the devices are built. So they are not capable of blocking significant reverse voltage and basically we then we can approximate the approximate IV characteristics of this like this. This is the off state and the positive horizontal axis and the on state is nearly on the positive vertical axis. And so we we actually have a single quadrant switch that operates on the first quadrant. The MOSFET is, is very similar. It's also a power transistor in wide use that has similar forward characteristics so it can conduct positive current and block positive voltage. In addition, the power MOSFET channel is symmetric and it can actually conduct reverse current as well. But in addition to that, the MOSFET also has what's called a body diode that is a built-in diode that comes from shorting the substrate of the MOSFET to the source of the MOSFET. This adds an extra PN junction that effectively acts like a diode in parallel with the MOSFET channel. And so the diode can also conduct reverse current. So in that sense, the MOSFET is a current bidirectional device. I have to add a few caveats to that though because the body diode in many MOSFETs is not optimized to be a good fast recovery diode. We'll talk about that in the future. In, in fact, the diode is slow enough and you, you can switch it off quickly. You can actually get such high currents flowing through that diode that it will make the device fail. So there are failure mechanisms associated with turning off the slow body diode. So we have to be careful if we want to operate the MOSFET in the reverse direction. But there are significant applications today where we do that and there are MOSFETs that are designed to have fast body diodes that can work in that direction. So the MOSFET is widely used as a single quadrant switch just like the BJT and IGBT. And also there are some applications where it is used as a current bidirectional switch. So here's an example. Here's our buck converter again. And what we've done is 
draw the switch in the buck converter as two single pole single throw switches and what I want to do is to illustrate now by example how to go through the analysis of those switches to decide how they must be realized with transistors and diodes so what what I've done is I've labeled in switch A and switch B and I've arbitrarily defined voltages across the switches so VA we've defined as a reference direction as plus on the left and minus on the right we could might as well choose it the other direction but this is what we've chosen having chosen that the direction of the current is from the switch IA is flowing from the reference positive terminal to the reference negative terminal likewise for switch P I'm going to define arbitrary voltage as having a reference direction as having a plus on the bottom and minus at the top and so the reference direction for the current IB flows from plus to minus of switch P now what we have to do is to figure out what is the on state voltage or on state current imposed on each switch by the converter and also what is the off state voltage that the switches have to block so let's do switch A first okay so when the switch is on we have A is on and B is off then you can see the current that switch A conducts is in the inductor current so IA equals IL now we know that the inductor current is also the load current so we have the inductor current IL equals V over R which is the load current and V is DVG so we have DVG over R and it is the current that the switch has to conduct now all of this is all positive quantities now we assume that V is all positive so d is positive vg is positive and it is a passive load so r is positive so that the on state current is positive so here is the on state current of ia it's a positive current when a is off what voltage does it have to block but when we turn a off we switch we turn switch B on and when A off and B on the voltage VA is equal to VG and that's a positive quantity so when the switch is off it blocks a voltage VG so the on state current and the off state voltage are both positive where we are in quadrant 1 and therefore the quadrant one we can realize this switch with the transistor say an IGBT okay so with an IGBT we can block positive voltage and conduct positive current which is how it's designed to operate okay let's consider switch B next when switch B is turned on and switch A is off what current does it conduct Well, with switch B on and switch A off, we can see that IB equals IL. And the defined polarities of IB and IL are the same in this case. And so the positive quantity, and we're conducting positive current. When switch B is off, then we have switch A is on and switch B has to block VG. But be careful the way we define the direction of VB, VB is actually minus VG, which is a negative quantity. 
so we have to block the negative voltage so in this case we have a positive current on state current and negative off state voltage we're in the second quadrant and that's a diode Okay, so switch B must be realized with a diode. Now you can see here also that the choice of switch isn't arbitrary. I couldn't put a diode at switch A or a transistor at switch B, at least not an IGBT or a BJT. So we have to realize these switches correctly. So by doing this simple exercise, we can see, we can follow in a systematic way to see exactly how to realize the devices. So here's the summary, we have to put a BJT for switch A and a diode for switch B. And in the next lecture, we're going to consider two quadrant switches and see some examples where that is needed.